What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. Today I'm going to show you guys the best shooting badges in NBA 2K21 next gen. Basically, I'm going to be going through every single badge, telling you guys whether you should use it or not. So first, we're going to start with Anti-Freeze. This badge is not bad. It's not amazing, but if you guys have extra shooting badges, make sure you put this badge on bronze. Just because when you do miss shots, your attributes go down. But if you have this badge on bronze, your attributes will not go down, even if you miss five shots in a row. So I would not put this badge higher than bronze, but if you have some extra badge points, make sure you put this badge on bronze. Blinders is a situational badge. You really only want to use this if you take a lot of fadeaway shots and your defenders are trying to contest you from the side. You probably want to put this badge on, and if I were to put it on, I would probably put it on silver. Now going into catch and shoot, I think this is the best badge in the game. And on any build you have, as long as the build can shoot, you want to max the badge 100%. Now going on to circus threes, moving threes are actually pretty easy to hit, so you don't need this badge, but if you do take a lot of moving threes, I would put this badge on. It can definitely help, but you don't need this badge. Clutch shooters are a pretty good badge, but the thing is, it only works in late game situations, so it's not going to work the whole game, so I don't think it's worth it to put this badge on, but it's definitely not a bad badge. Now for corner specialist, it's a good badge, but you don't need it Hall of Fame, you really only need it silver, and I wouldn't put it higher than that unless you have some extra badge points. Going into Deadeye, this is one of the better badges. On my build, I actually don't use this badge at all because I normally just pull open shots. But if you are a guard or you are the primary ball handler for your team and you like to dribble and take threes that are a little bit contested, you probably want to max this badge at Hall of Fame. Going on to deep threes, it's also really good. If you're a guard, you want to put it Hall of Fame 100%. But if you really just sit in the corner, you don't need this badge. But if you are going to put this badge on, if you don't pull too many limitless shots, you should probably put it bronze just in case you get spotted up a little bit behind the line. You can pull the shot and still make it. You don't need it higher than bronze, but on my build, I actually get it gold. I maxed it gold. So for the sake of this, we're just going to say put it Hall of Fame, max it if you can, but you don't necessarily need to. Difficult Shots is a good badge. It only works on mid-ranges now because Circus 3s works on 3-pointers. It's like the Difficult Shots for 3-pointers. So Difficult Shots now is definitely not as good. I think this badge is good, but you only really need it for 2s if you're going to take a bunch of fadeaway shots. But other than that, I wouldn't use it for 3s. And you can use it for Rec, but a lot of the time, the court's going to be clogged up because there are 5 people on the court. So I wouldn't use this badge unless you're going to play 2s. Same with Fade Ace, you really don't need this badge unless you're playing twos and you're a post scorer. Or even if you're not a post scorer, you could use this because if you guys don't know, post fade this year is not an attribute that you can upgrade in the My Player Builder. So whatever your mid range is, that's what your post fade is going to be. So I'm guessing that most players, even guards, their post fade is going to be pretty high. So this could be a good badge, but I honestly don't think it's worth it to put it on because there are way better shooting badges. Green Machine is a really good badge, but at the same time, you don't really need it. What this badge does is after you green two shots in a row, your chance to green your third shot goes up until you stop greening a certain number of shots in a row. So if you green three shots in a row and then you don't green the next one, you start back from zero. So this badge, it's pretty good. I use it on my build, but you don't necessarily need it. Now Hot Shot, this is a new badge in NBA 2K21 Next Gen, and it is one of the better badges because it gets your takeover super fast. So you can put this on whatever level you want. You don't need this badge. I don't use this badge. This is more so an extra badge that you could put on your player. A lot of people do use it. I don't. You don't need this badge. But for the sake of this, we're going to put it Hall of Fame. And the one thing I like about NBA 2K21 Next Gen is that you can change your badges anytime. So I would go ahead and test this badge out. If you have extra badges to put on, you should probably try out Hot Shot. It's a really good badge, but you don't necessarily need it. Now for Hot Zone Hunter, I think Catch and Shoot is the best shooting badge, and I think Hot Zone Hunter is a close second. Once you get your Hot Zones, this badge makes it so you can green a lot more. You won't get a lot of full bars if you have Hot Zones and if you have Hot Zone Hunter maxed. Ice and Veins is really just a Pro-Am badge, and even then, there are so many badges that are better, so I wouldn't use this on any build. Unless you're a build that can't really shoot and you just upgrade your free throw for rec and you can get this. But other than that, I would not use this badge. Rhythm Shooter is one of those badges that's not the best and it is a situational badge. So if you guys end up doing the curry slide a lot, you probably want to put this badge on. Because Rhythm Shooter and Set Shooter, these two badges are probably good if you do the curry slide a lot. Just because you do a dribble move and then you wait a little bit before you shoot it. So as you can see, Set Shooter says increase your shot rating when you take time before shooting. So if you do the curry slide... This is one of the extra badges. A lot of these other badges I would put over them, but if you have extra shooting badges and you do the curry slide a lot, I would put on set shooter and rhythm shooter. Slippery off ball is not a horrible badge, but it's pretty bad compared to all the other shooting badges. I wouldn't put this on unless you're just an off ball cutter and somebody who doesn't have the ball in their hands a lot and can't really put other shooting badges on. 
Sniper is a new badge they added in NBA 2K21 Next Gen, and it's not a bad badge, but I don't use it just because I don't use my right stick to shoot shots. But if you do use your right stick to shoot shots, this is probably a badge that you want to have gold or Hall of Fame. Stop and Pop is also one of the new badges they added into NBA 2K21 Next Gen. This badge is amazing. Behind Catch and Shoot and Hot Zone Hunter, I think this might be the third best badge. With my player, I can dribble. I'm not the primary ball handler though, so a lot of the time I'm just spotting up in the corner. But with this badge, it makes it so that I don't have to spot up all the time. I can do so much more. So on any build, honestly, I would max this up unless you just strictly sit in the corner and you can't dribble at all. But if you can dribble on your build, you want to have this shooting badge because when you do do catch and shoot shots, you get a huge boost. And when you don't, you get no boost. But if you have this badge on, you'll get a boost to non catch and shoot shots and you'll be able to make a lot more of your shots. Tyler Shooter used to be a decent badge in NBA 2K19 and 20, but now in NBA 2K21 Next Gen, this badge is pretty much useless. I would never put this on your player. This might be the worst shooting badge along with Ice and Veins. Those badges are just not worth it to put on at all. And finally, getting into Volume Shooter, this badge was good in NBA 2K20, and then in NBA 2K21 Current Gen, it got a little bit worse. And this is also a situational badge where I would only put it on if you're 100% the primary ball handler and you're taking a bunch of shots. So this badge isn't the best for rec unless you're taking all the shots, but you have to share the ball with four other people. And then for threes, it gets a little bit better because you only have to share with two more people. I would really only use this badge if you're playing twos and you're going to be taking almost all the shots for your team. If you guys have any questions about any of these badges, just make sure to drop a comment down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's Josh and I'm out.